Hey YouTube, I've been asked to show how to remove a 3BF valve. Um, the guy that I'm making this for actually has the string linkage, but otherwise this should be pretty much the same. So, here we go. First step, pretty simple, take off the valve cap. And if that's stuck, then well, that's a whole other problem, isn't it? Now that we have the valve cap off, you can check out the back where these witness marks on the valve should line up with the witness mark on the backing plate. You notice mine do not match up, including my witness mark matching this up, but those are not always correct, and as long as it's actually 90 degrees, it's probably pretty close. And of course, I don't have string linkage. Um, I'm actually filming this at the end, but I'll put it at the beginning. If you're confused about how the string linkage goes on, and it's actually not that confusing, take a couple pictures from all angles to make sure you know how it works. Um, and that way when you get to the end, like I am right now, you can just put it back together having a reference. Next step, find a screwdriver that fits these screws. These are kind of annoying because they're usually really thin flathead style. Mine is on a nice Gerber tool that I found on the side of the road a while ago. And you're gonna wanna unscrew this screw. The spider is helping me take the screw out and yes this spider is also gigantic. So now the screw is out and probably put the screw where you're gonna find it again. It's not a part you're gonna want to replace. Now you're gonna want to get the stop arm which is the uh, the part here with the little guy that stops against the bumpers. You're gonna want to get this off of the spindle of the valve which is inside here. A couple different ways to do this I usually use the very unsavory way of just prying it up with a, a screwdriver. Um, there are smarter ways to do it, like using a nice um, like punch right here that you'll put in here, and then you'll hammer that with a nice soft hammer to make the valve come out the bottom. Um, I'm probably going to pry it, but you should probably do the better way. I just don't have the right tools for this. So do this the right way. Don't mess up your valve. So this is something actually easier on the uh, string linkage version, but you'll see once you get the stop arm off, the valve will come out of the bottom. And so now the stop arm is just loose doing its own thing, and the valve is now in its separate components. So here we have the backing plate, which uh, you can see has the witness marks on it. We have the rotor core, which is just kind of wobbling, weeble wobbling around. And we have the valve casing right here. Now, I don't need to do this because my valve is pretty clean because um, it was just clean, clean recently. But basically, you just want to make sure that there's, there is nothing gross in here. You want to use a paper towel, maybe some alcohol, um, maybe some vinegar if you're feeling really... Uh, really uh, brave today. Uh, but I would just use like a paper towel or something, maybe rinse it out with water so there's no residue left from the paper towel. And then uh, do the same thing to the rotor core and also to the backing plate, which is under my trombone. And then once everything is clean, which mine is because it started that way, you're gonna wanna oil all of it. So we have bearing oil for the bearings. I use Ultra Pure because I'm cool like that. And then also valve oil for everything that is not a specific bearing. Now on a rotor, the bearings are this little guy on the back in the middle. That's one of the, I guess you call it a spindle. I guess it's a bearing. I don't know. I'm not super up on the nomenclature here. And then also, of course, since I knocked this over, the other side is also a bearing. So I'm going to put this guy, my bearing oil, on both sides. I can't do this on camera because I only have one hand. And this is something I can do a little bit, even though I only have one. I'm gonna put some in the valve casing itself and also on the valve uh, all the way around um, just to get enough oil and everything. It's kind of hard to get too much oil on your valve. You know, don't, don't go nuts. Don't use all of this bottle, but it's better to have just a little too much than not enough. And it's spinning like a top. So I'm putting on my bearing oil. Now I'm gonna put on valve oil, just the normal stuff, for pistons or rotors. If you don't have stuff like this, that's for both. You use rotor oil, of course. And I'm gonna put that on the walls of the casing all around the sides, and also on the sides of the rotor itself. So now that I have this all oiled up, I'm going to put this in. And this is a little more complicated. I have to line it up with my stop arm as I do this. If you have the uh, string linkage version, I don't think you have to do that. So 
I have the harder part of this, and if you don't, then this is a lot easier than for you. And I have to do this off camera. Cool, the rotor is back in. Um, not quite all the way, but I'll press it in myself in just a second. And now I'm going to put more bearing oil on the inside. You can see that surface in there. Um, more bearing oil there and more bearing oil on the rotor. And then I'll just put a little more, a little more of the valve oil on the rotor as I push it in. So now everything is lubed up. I have the rotor pushed in all the way. Um, the stop arm is now tight. It's kind of hard to show that. And now I'm going to put the bearing, or the, uh, not bearing, the valve cap, the valve back plate on. I'm going to try and line it up. And there we go. And now is the hard part. You want to get this seated just right. Basically, you know, kind of hitting it softly on all edges with a nice soft mallet um, to make sure it seats perfectly. And you can basically just check by moving the valve. And if it doesn't move, it's not seated right. And if it does move, then it is seated right. And you can also tell by looking at the edges, if they're even all the way around and flush against the casing, then you're good to go. If not, then it needs to go in farther. And this is not in at all. So I will now do this off camera. Well, that took all of two seconds because this one is not tight enough to um, need a hammer. And we'll check it right now. Ooh, missed with my finger. And it moves perfectly. No binding, no noise. I can't feel anything as I move it back and forth. So I'm basically good to go. I'm just going to add a little bit of bearing oil to the top just to make sure there's enough. And second to last thing you'll do is add back the valve cap. Assuming you get the threads right, the fifth time, sixth time, seventh time. There it is. Put that on there just tight enough. Last assembly step, put the screw back in. You can do the first part by hand because this is not fun with a screwdriver. Get it to where you can't tighten with hand and then tighten it just a little more with the screwdriver. It's now tightened down with the screwdriver. Um, last thing I'll do is add, since I have the mechanical linkage version like this, I'll add bearing oil underneath this and this, just to make sure everything is lubricated in some way or another. And then, last step for me, is I wipe everything down that's exposed with a microfiber or a cloth, just to get all the exposed oil that's just kind of sitting around on everything away, because that doesn't need to be there, and we only need the oil basically in the valve. So here I am at the end. Um, valve works nice and quietly. Um, I'm pretty sure it just seals as well as it used to. Got this nice uh, 70s 3B. I guess that's my serial number. Everyone put that on the internet, I guess. Um, and that's how you take apart oil, uh, I guess clean oil and reassemble 3BF valve if you don't have string linkage, which I don't. See you guys next time.